Hey guys, thank you for listening to Demon Days, an actual play podcast with a focus on fiends and the friends who play them. This is Jonathan, your GM, and I wanted to give you a little bit of an update about uh, where we're at with the podcast and everything. February is almost over and we're still on our bi-weekly schedule. Uh, that's just because we haven't been able to schedule a time to record our next set of episodes. But don't worry, we're going to be doing that very soon and expect us to get back to our regularly scheduled schedule. Uh, about March 3rd. And if there's any changes to that, we'll let you know in the beginning of the episode here and on our socials. That's These Demon Days with a Z wherever you are online. Last but not least, our shoutouts. Want to draw your attention to Kilowatt, who does the artwork for our show. She does an amazing job and you can find all her work in the show notes of each week's episode. Also want to give a big shout out to Ark Knight, who sponsors our show. Their props, maps, and minis make the table a delight. Seriously, check them out. You won't regret it. And now, let's get to the episode. Friends, fiends, we find ourselves once again in combat! This time, with a posse of dark dwarves who want nothing more than to seemingly destroy this mechanical conveyance and strip it of its valuable parts. How rude! Anyway, I'm rooting for our heroes to kick all kinds of ass. So let's get right back into these Demon Days! Which then brings us to the spider closest to Fetter, and off jumps the relatively larger Duragar than the others. It looks a little bit more important. Mm-hmm. It starts to head your way. Well, before it comes up to you, it's going to land on the ground, and suddenly it just starts to get a really angry face, and it grows before your eyes. It starts to enlarge itself. Useful. Kinky. And then it'll make its way to you. Mm-hmm. No. It's going to try to... It's going to go past you. He's going to leap down onto the car. You'll get, you get an opportunity attack. Mm-hmm. Okay. On him, but he's I'll take it. charging past. And it shakes the, the train car a little bit as he runs past. And at first you think he's going to attack you. So you get your up, your attack ready. Mm-hmm. And he starts to pass. Uh, 24. 24 hits. Uh, and that is... Uh, six points of regular damage and five points of poison damage. Okay. Poison. Yeah, it gets a good, some good hit on it, and he flinches, but something about these Duragar are a little bit more stoic, so you're not getting a good read on the damage you did, but you know you did a, a bit. Mm-hmm. And each hit is true and goes through, and yeah, he then lands next to uh, Flotsam there and starts to uh, make an attack against the engine. Miss, uh, hit, and then hit. Yusuf, you get that big Spartan kick ready, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's yeah, he's gonna get a hoof to the balls. And by a hoof, I mean a double-handed greatsword. All right, Fetter, mm-hmm. you and Yusuf both see this. This bigger, more important-looking Duragar jumps down, and you see his hammer as he pulls it out, and you both notice a little bit of shimmery air around it, and the air shimmers a bit around his head, too. And he swings back and starts to pummel against the train engine. Not uh, not uh, Flotsam, necessarily, but the actual mechanism itself. The first one dings, and it slides off and misses, but the other two hit, and you feel the train car shake a bit. <laughs> And it reverberates across the, the train. And uh, he starts to do a bit of damage. Not too much to derail you, but you, his, glo- his goal is very apparent. And then another spider gets to the side on its turn and falls off the train. Mm-hmm. Son of beach. Are they honestly falling off the train or are they just clinging to the side? They're clinging to the side. Because spiders. <laughs> and then finally, before we get to Sunny and then Taslin, the Duragar comes into you, Fetter, to try and make an attack. Is that the little boy I fucked up? No, it's his, his friend. No, oh, okay. He too uh, enlarges and you... I should have let you kill them. I should have let you kill them. You shouldn't have? Yeah, I thought I murdered him in cold blood. No, there was one that got away. You, The one that uh, you cut his arm off. Mm. Um, 
That one we murdered, yeah. You can, at, at any of your turns, you can do perception to see if one of those is the same, but mm-hmm. so, he just enlarged himself and he is going to attack you, Fetter, with his soul blade. In 19 to hit. Heads. All right. And uh, he hits you for 10 force damage. And can he dodge? Okay. I see him swinging and I roll into it with my shoulder. Take a little bit of it. That ends his turn and flots him. The eyes just move around in a panic. It can't do much other than just keep the train going. But if there are any in future round commands you want to give to it, go ahead. And it will. Uh, you can do a free action to give a command and it will achieve it on its turn. Bringing us to Sunny. Okay. Taslin, you're up. I'm going to tell Yusuf to just go with it, and then I'm literally going to climb him so I can get out of the hatch. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I'm not near I'm not near the hatch. <sighs> That's right. You're over there. Well, then I will be like, Yusuf, I need your help. Come here. No, I can't do that because you're not going to cross over until your turn. But so I'm going to pile some crates. <laughs> So I can get out the hatch because I'm not very strong. I can't really pull myself out. Like, I can't leap up there and pull myself out. Um, As she's saying this to me, I kind of turn and point to the big angry dwarf hitting the engine. Do you handle him? Ugh. (laughs) Well, I'll just like poke my head out of the hatch and kind of assess the situation. So we've got a spider, two, two Drogar, and then there's big angry guy underneath. So as I'm like sticking half out of the hatch, (laughs) I will Eldritch Blast the spider that is in between me and the other dwarves. Absolutely. (laughs) You see the hatch open just ever so slightly and your eyes appear. It's like the poster from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie of like Raphael peeking through like there's Taslin. Um so that is a 27 to hit and oh, then Jesus a Christ. 24 to hit. Yeah, both hit. Really hit. They, they hit. They so hit. This thing isn't as armored. You don't have to hit as hard, all right? <laughs> um 14 for one and then 10 for the other. Yeah, each blast does excessive damage to the spider. You realize it's not as uh, protected or as armored as you might have initially thought based off its size, and it wobbles on the the train and is in a rough, really rough shape. Not quite dead, but barely holding on. I'm okay with being excessive with spiders. All right. And then do you have any other movement? Um, No, I'll just kind of stay there and hope the crates underneath me don't get jostled enough to send me falling on my ass. Okay. And then that brings us to Fetter. All right, so thanks for the help. It's a little spicy up here. Hey, uh, come and get me, asshole. And I say to the uh, the larger of the drawer guard, and uh, what I'm going to do, bonus action to disengage, I am going to pretty much run down, you know, run down the length of the first car. Uh, I'm going to swipe Dragon Tooth um, at the drawer guard, the, the one I had the the smaller one that I had really crispied up, and then I'm just gonna dash around the other two until I end up doing like a little hop to get on the other side of Taslin and uh, turn around. So, okay, my hope is let's see <laughs> that maybe I can put down the little one on the way. Um, that is an 18 on the die, so 24. Yep, 24 hits. Um, that is let's see. Ho ho ho. Is there damage in the two digits? Yeah. Uh, well, no, wait, let's see. That is um, nine damage, uh, nine slashing, and uh, four poison. Perfect. And uh, with satisfaction, Fetter, your estimation was correct. He uh, croaks. The blade gets him true and <laughs> falls over. And Yeah, just like, you know, it's like... Ni- ceases to be. Ninja slash, like, as, as I'm running, just like, whing, and then just like kind of a little bit of like a kip and like kind of land in like a sliding because I'm, you know, it's not very fast, but there's some momentum, you know, trying to turn back around so that I'm, you know, facing southbound again on the other side of Taz. Kind of three point superhero stance on the roof. Perfect. And then brings us to this farthest back spider. We'll move it most of the way of its 30 feet, but climb up back to the rest because it cannot pass the other spider. They're big. And now it's back on the second car. 
ending its turn. It looks like they're just moving forward to get some cavalry. And, oh, perfect. Then we're back to the spider that is on the main car here, the car where everything's happening. Sees that Fetter has left, but it's going to turn around and start ch giving chase. And uh, does it notice Taslin? Because Taslin, you're not fully up. You just peeked over and kind of- No, I'm not fully up on the car. Okay. I'm doing the whole like, the, you know, hanging out of the limo mm -hmm. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so it doesn't notice you. It could, because A, it's big and the rider on top doesn't have enough field of view. There's a lot of blind spot below it, so it doesn't see you. It only has eyes for Fetter. All right, so there's still a rider on top of the spider. Right. Okay. So if it's going to pass me, then I get an opportunity attack, yeah? <laughs> uh, depends on if it gets out of its melee range, because it's huge. And it does... Yes, you do get a hit on it. Okay, so because I'm a warcaster, I can Eldritch Blast as an opportunity attack now. Mm-hmm. There we go. The first one probably doesn't hit, uh, but the second one, because I get to launch two, um, is another 27. Babe, don't forget, you can roll a d4 to add to that if you think it'll help. Oh, no. No, it won't. Okay. I rolled a nine on the first one. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, no. All right, all right. So the second one was 27, you said, to hit? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, and that is a... Fuck, I can do math. Why is that one the hardest one for me? Not at all. 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. Right to the backside. I tried to do one in the underbelly, and it just kind of fizzled. Mm -hmm. I was like, ha ha, shh, and damn it, and then right in the backside. Yeah. It's just the awkward way that that thing scuttles along. From your vantage point, I mean, you spiders, gross, but it's kind of comical that it, it, it a lot. It's a lot very top heavy, so the weight just kind of left bobble right as it scurries forward, and yeah, you get the first one just doesn't doesn't do much to the other side, but that last one does everything, and it skitters and uh, slips and starts to fall. Now we have to do a check here. I mean, they do say it's like the butts of the spiders that are the weakest, so yeah. So, rolling a save, as the, the spider starts to fall off to its doom, the rider has enough sense, just enough sense to be able to jump off of it. The roll was just right, so he did not go down with his spider, but whew, that ends the spider's rotation. This Duragar will increase its size further back. These guys don't have a lot of movement, which is good for everybody mm -hmm. who's a protagonist. That's his movement. He's big, and he's moving towards you. Bringing us to Yusuf. He's going to move up. All right. As he winds up, he says, sorry, I don't speak dwarf. So diplomatic. Both of those miss. <laughs> Rolled a two and a three. Nope. Oh, wait a second. Well, I can add D4s to that, so maybe... Unless it's not worth it. Um, oh, the 11 definitely didn't hit. Does a... Uh, does a 13 hit him? He's, he said doubtfully. No. No, 13 does not. Yeah, I didn't think they would. This one, Yusuf, you sense, has got some heft to him, some armoring to him, and has been a lot, is a lot harder to get a good hit on. I'm supposed to want to roll a two and a three. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. Inspiration, because I fucking have it. Nice. Do it. Do something. Are you fucking me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Oh, they are uh, fucking you. So I didn't roll a one, so that's good. Mm -hmm. But the first two times, I rolled a two and a three. Four? So this time, of course, I roll four. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what no. What a fucking waste. Yep. All right. Well, that's done. There you go. All that time just wasted. Unless, hang on. Oh, God. <laughs> A four, I mean, a four makes it a 12, right? So With bless? Nope, so that's still a 14. No. Still a 14. Nah. -uh. All right. Nope. Next. I'm done. Yeah, so it is at, it is at Duragar's turn. He sees you attempt very uh, poorly to hit him, and it aggros him. He turns to you and decides, like, he thinks he's got this. So he's going to roll. Suddenly you see him rear back at a speed that is almost startling to you for his multi-attack. I mean, this was my plan, because... Yeah. 22 for the first one. 
Hit. 14 for the second one? Miss. And then 10 for the third one. Yay. Okay. So he ge- he rears up, and you see the shimmering air around this strange hammer, kind of from his mind. It, there seems to be some extra psychic thing going on. And he swings, and the first hit is really good, and you take uh, 15 uh, bludgeoning damage plus 5 psychic damage. Oh, wow. Okay. 20 points, you fucking dickbag. And to round out its turn, you hear uh, the the first, the second two, <laughs> the second two, the other two miss. The first one gets you good, and it causes you to jostle to where there's just not a good connection on the last two hits. But you f- sense that same energy of like, oh, those could have really hurt too. Mm-hmm. And in frustration, he just gives a, a guttural yell that resounds across the train cars. And you sense this sort of energy, this speed that invigorates the current Duergar that are on the top of the train. Oh, no. And those that are near people are able to get an extra hit in, which is so far only just the one. Oh, no. The one closest to Fetter Mm -hmm. gets a little bit of inspiration, and you notice his step quicken. Something in that voice, that booming voice. And he's going to try and do a weapon attack (laughs) for five. Nope. Five to miss. That's just great. just just yep. just working our way up the dice. Yep, tiny little two, shrimp. three, four, five. Do a little matrix action. Yep, that's just amazing. Jesus. And I'm like Sherlock Holmes clocking this guy. Like I'm I'm watching the way he's moving. And then this other spider continues down that path. And yeah, the Duragar that's just standing there that was hitting on you, Fetter, mm-hmm. doesn't have anyone to play with right now. It's going to take. It's movement towards uh, Tesla. Are you st- you, you, yeah, you're still looking in the round. I'm going to, it's going to try to. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even notice you. It's heading towards Fetter. So, <laughs> thank God for low observation skills. And it too is going to try and attack you, Fetter. Mm-hmm. Mm, Seventeen to hit. Yeah. Okay. So that's thirteen total damage. Uncanny dodge. Okay. And that's my one for this round. I'm trying to keep track of it. So. Gotcha. Yeah. That goes down to six. Cool. And some of that is, not that that changes your thing. Some of it was force. Mm -hmm. And that's his turn. And since no commands were issued to Flotsam, he's just continuing at the current pace of the train car, which is back up to normal speed. And you all hear a shattering noise as... No, that's ironic. The door to the back car on the east side just bursts out, just... And out goes a Duragar. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, let me show him up here. Well, Sonny's got things handled. So you see it kind of like, ah! and uh, true to form, Sonny peeks her head out and she sort of take that, you motherfuckers. <laughs> and that is her turn, bringing us to Taslin. So I wish they were a little bit more grouped up, but I'm not going to get my wish. So, um... I am going to the spider that's hanging out on the side of this guy, and then the spot and then the jargar that's on his way onto our cart. Those two, I'm gonna kind of uh, just kind of like put put my hand flat down onto the uh, cart or the car top of the car, and mutter something under my breath, and then they need to make a. Con save. Con save. Got it. Okay. So the enlarged Durgar on top of the train rolls a 19, and then the spider rolled a 9. Okay. So, let me see. Okay. Ah, this is going to be some math. So, <laughs> Yay. very, there's a, there's a loud kind of, it, that, shattering sound that happened when uh, Sunny threw the Drogar out of the... <laughs> yeah. And that, it's gonna sound like that's happening again. Alright, so the one that failed, so the spider, mm-hmm. is gonna take 26 points of thunder damage. Okay. And the Drogar that made his save is only gonna take 13 points of thunder damage. Oh, okay. Not too bad. And the thunder damage, uh, okay. So the thunder damage against the spider, it 
a few of the limbs peel off from it as the force just the thunder damage like, shakes it so much but it still manages to hold on a bit so <laughs> it is a not doing too well it's bleeding profusely and in rough shape but it's barely holding on literally right and then we get to shorty here after your turn who is also going to enlarge so he's not that shorty anymore also where is he is trying to sense where there's extra attacks in here there's more than just the rogue doing his stuff as i see him enlarge i'm like you know small sometimes is enjoyable (laughs) do you say that out loud to him yeah (laughs) okay advantage oh god damn Every roll so far has been low. Like, all my dice are fired. Um, he doesn't notice you. He tries to discern where that's coming from, but can't, so... Oh, well. Going to attempt to attack Fetter again. You're, you're just there, mm-hmm. essentially. And in his form, that is eight, 18 to hit. Hits. And the same situation, 13 force damage. Okay, I already used my uncanny dodge, so I'm going to eat that. All right, yeah, it doesn't feel too great, but... It's not nearly as much as the uh, other folks at Dwarndal were hitting. But, luckily enough, Fedder's turn is next. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> well, that changes what I was thinking ever so slightly. Fuck it. Um, all right. I'm going to go um, Flotsam, full stop. And uh, then I'm going to, fuck it, uh, insightful fighting on the the rider that had just enlarged in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a 18. Uh, it only rolled a 13, so. Okay, great. Uh, and then I'm going to attack. That is a 16 to hit. 16 to hit. The one in front of you who just attacked you, the, the right. Yes. Yes, 16 just hits. Yeah. <laughs> All right. snork torque um, Not the best it's ever been. Uh, let's see. That's 10, 15. Um, that is a... That's 20 points of slashing and two points of poison. Oh, almost. You get the blades in it and it does the damage, and it's so close to death. It falls to one knee and goes prone. Fuck, I was hoping to one-shot that guy. Um... All right, uh, so I'm just gonna fucking whatever. I'm I'm in a kill box at the moment between these two dudes, so I'm just gonna stay there um, for the moment. Might have to bail out next turn. That's what I got. Okay. And then we've got the spider doing its. Oh no, it doesn't get very far. Gets about to there. Can't do too much other than that, which then leads us to the other shorty who isn't quite the shorty. It's going to. Does it see Taslin? Yeah, it does a better job. It's going to head in that direction in the hopes of finding out where the source of that voice is coming from. 25, it just gets it just gets there. And with disadvantage, since you're not fully out onto the roof, it's going to try to attack with disadvantage. Yeah, fucking one. Okay. Yusuf, your turn. <laughs> um, concentration checks are a constitution save, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Because I realized I didn't make one for taking that damage. I'm fine. Okay. Um, Yusuf kind of like staggers back up after taking that hit and he, the other guy missing the other two and he kind of like looks at his sword, shakes it, tinks it, and he's like, and kind of shrugs him. He's like, I don't know. And he comes back in and tries again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is the is the large one inside or outside? Like He's outside one. next to the engine. Yeah. So technically he's on my level, but he's technically outside. I mean, it's selling yourself a little short. You're you're a very skilled paladin. I don't know if he's quite on your level. Is a 17 hit him? 17? No, it does not. How about a 19? Mm, Almost, but not quite. God damn it. No, 20. Jesus, fuck. All right, I'm done. All right. He uh, sees all that and turns back to face the engine again. He's going to do his three attacks. First one to miss completely. My God, what the fuck with that dice? Uh, 14, no. Okay, so he does get one to hit. He smashes his hammer three times against the the train again. Uh, each, Both glancing, the first two glancing off of 
the metal. It's just the angle's not right. His stance is not right. The moving, he didn't factor that in. The last one does hit, and the train jostles a little bit as it takes some more damage. Nothing to worry about just yet, but he's starting to put some dent into the console. And the eye of Flotsam is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bringing us to the spider that's barely holding on. It's going to try and... Can it? Can it? Yes, it's fine. It'll make its way up and get to the edge where it's safe. No, fall off. And that, <laughs> okay. Whoop. <laughs> Golly, this is just a cluster near... It's a party near Fetter. Okay. He's going to make his attack on Fetter. Let's see what... Uh, well, the spider's a she, so my bad. Uh, 22 to hit, Fetter. Yep. And it comes in for a bite. It just... Doof, doof, argh, it bites in, and you take mm, seven piercing damage, and then you need to make a constitution mm. saving throw or take a little bit more damage. Uh, 15. Fine. You're good. You only take the seven damage. Not a whole lot. It doesn't seem to have quite a good mm-hmm. bite into you, but there could have been some more. There could have been some poison damage along with that. So seven damage. Do you have that or are you just chilling with the seven? No, I already used my reaction this round. Gotcha. Cool. And then we got the uh, big guy to the bottom of you there. Also going to. Mm, nope. It rolls a four. Mm, great. Flotsam pumps the brakes. Everyone do a save? Just a deck save? Not a big one. It's just a it's just gonna shift things. Yeah, so I rolled a two, so I'm gonna use my inspiration <laughs> that I've been holding up uh, to. You have a pl- you have a plus three to saving throws if you're never mind, no one's near me. <laughs> you have a plus two. Where did everyone go? Alright, that's better. <laughs> Seventeen plus Four plus a million. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, He's the dexiest of us all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. 21. Yeah, 25. You're so dexy. All right. Oh, Rexy. 13 for me. 17. Yeah, Yusuf, you just shift uh, a little bit forward, about maybe within the f- within five feet. This guy didn't save too much, so he kind of stumbles and goes prone, breaking free. He like, this flanking thing... That guy falls forward. All the Durgar on, on train one, they fall prone. Uh, they weren't quite ready for it and didn't roll well enough. And the spiders managed to hold on. And yeah, now the train car is stopped. Sunny is going to climb up the train car. Oh, it, it stopped? Yeah. Oh, I thought it just said he pumped the brakes. I said full stop. Oh, <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, this was sudden. So, like, everyone rolled fairly well. I was... It was looking for, like, ones and twos to really send you guys flying. I mean, I figured everybody inside the train would have been fine, and I could have figured it out, so. Yeah. So, yeah, Sunny gets up on the train. She goes 30. She just starts charging towards the spider. She's getting, she's in combat mode now, just, I'm going to, I'm going to get these fuckers. Uh, she'll dash. She up top, or? She's up top now. Yeah. So she gets to go there, ends her turn, bringing us to Teslin. Um... I will pull myself the rest of the way onto the roof. Okay. Um, it's crowded over there. <laughs> have my have my little raven blade come out, and we're gonna make an attack with some green flame blade. Nice. You're just hoping this one lands and doesn't fizzle out. Um, twenty four to hit. Uh, yes. Which one are you hitting? Oh, I'm gonna hit the two that a group together. Got it. Okay, yeah. So I'm hitting this gets closest to me, but then because I was successful, this one is going to have the flame leap to him, and I'll do that damage in a second. Sure, yeah. So, yeah, both hit. Their AC is not quite as high as the big guy trying to take a chunk out of the train car. So he's going to take 11 points of slashing damage. Okay, the first guy? Yeah, the first guy is going to take 11 points of slashing damage, and then green flames are going to come from my blade onto his body, and he will take six points of fire damage, and then the flame is literally going to, like an ember, kind of leap onto the guy that's by Fetter. Who is uh, the former rider that got all smoked up last round for me. Yeah, that I was like... You can have fun being small, too. Small <laughs> things are fun, too. 
Um, so he's going to take 10 points of fire damage. Oh, perfect. Good. So uh, how, do you, how do you envision this this fella eating it? Um, so as the little ember of green flame kind of goes over, it'll catch on like his armor and it'll literally engulf and you know, the dude that's set on fire yeah, flailing and wailing, I guess, just Yeah, just like ah! falling off the train. And he ah! And yeah, he did. He's out of rotation. Should have stayed, stayed small. <laughs> Leaving us to Fetter, unless you have other movement or action you want to do or can do. I'll just kind of step off of the vent. That way I have less of an opportunity to fall back in. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, Fetter, it's, it's you. First swipe at the spider next to me that's slid into. Okay, so that is uh, 15 to hit. Uh, yes, it does. And that is... Seven points of damage, uh, slashing damage, three points of poison. All right. That one gets a two. Uh, how, how do you want this guy to go? Are you going to try to get him off? The Again, I think it's the same. Like, I, it's just like a it's a swipe with kind of a push. And uh, the the poison kind of addles the spider's brain as it like slips off the side. All right. I'm going to look down to Taz and be like, thanks for that. Anytime. Flat. Flotsam, forward ho. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to toss a dagger over Taz uh, towards the Drargar that she hit with the green flame blade. Just a regular dagger. Okay. Uh, and that is a 27 to hit. 27 totally hits. And uh, a really exciting, uh, let's see, uh, seven points of damage. Just classic regular dagger coming at him. All right. Yeah, you know, it, it's it is in really rough shape. The dagger hits and he's got a little bit more to go he's not quite there but he does fall prone actually no he's still prone he hasn't gotten up for prone <laughs> he's in just now bleeding more and in more horrible pain and uh, as a previous note oh so i should not that it mattered i should have probably had uh advantage to yeah and i should have i should actually have disadvantage on that uh oh yeah on the ranged attack so that goes to a 13 instead. A 13? 13 does not. All right. And I'm down a regular deck. Uh, what was the original damage before we had to backtrack? Seven. Seven? Okay. Cool. So I'll revert that and we'll go from there. Uh, Fetter, though, as a note, with the spider that you did kill and kicked it off, there was a brief opportunity for the Durgar that was riding it to leap off, like the last time. Mm -hmm. It failed the roll. <laughs> Both Ryder and Spider Bye. are down. Ryder and Spider. <laughs> Doing the bowl dance. Feeling the flow. Working. <laughs> oh, all right. So that ends Fetter's turn, leaving us with uh, the last remaining Spider. It's going to come in and we saw the other one has and do a little bit more damage. It's going to make its attempt. The rider is going to actually do an attack while on the mount. 18 to hit? Yep. Alright, it comes in with the spider bouncing around and with the way he's swinging, he's swinging it wild, a bit undisciplined, and you think it's going to miss, but this war pick, he swings it in and it manages to get you for uh, 6 piercing damage. Yep, just 6 piercing damage. It's not, it's not much. Annoying. Yeah. That ends his turn bringing us to, you know, these Duragars really don't like you guys anymore. Tazlin and Fetter, they're not going to invite you to their parties. Fine, their parties suck. Another one comes up to you. Does a 13 hit you, Tazlin? I don't think it does. It meets my armor. It, oh, it does? Okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, blade comes in from the Duragar as he stomps in at you for 13 damage. Both of them are forced. So there's 10 force initially, but because he's so big, there's an extra oomph with the third. So you get 13 and that ends his turn, bringing us to Yusuf. Do something. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Billy. I fought in the general direction of your dice. Well, that's a miss. A 16, I know, doesn't do it. Nope. A 21, though. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. 21. That hits. Pump it full, that shit. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna smite this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 12 plus 11 is 23 plus 10 is 33 plus 2 
35 points of damage as he hits finally. Yeah, that one hit does a lot of damage. He's, I would say, bloodied at this point. A lot of armor plating does fall out. Uh, I would say reducing his AC by about one. There's a little bit more opportunity to hit him. And he grunts and Ugh! with the hit. So just make a note of that. His AC changes in your favor. Copy that. 19 now. The warlord, this Duergar guy. Yeah, you really hit him. He didn't like that. You're pulling some good aggro on him. He's going to turn around and attempt to attack you. So he comes in for the attack. Better uh, Yusuf, you know, based off the way he's, sw- he's swinging in. First one, miss. You're able to glance it off the armor. Doesn't do anything. Second one, again. You're like, what, what is this? This guy's kind of a joke. Uh, the last one, though. And I'll show you the dice as it was rolled. Where the fuck is my camera? Yeah. It rolled a uh, natural 20. Fred. Yeah. Oh, man. 20 damage against you as he brings that last hammer strike down. And this one just gets square. Bam! He was really pissed off from those two misses. And this one hits you directly in the, the chest. So 20 bludgeoning. And then there is still just the normal five. Uh, so 25 total? Yeah, 25 total. Uh, the five is psychic. Yeah. And that ends his turn. And now we've got Soul Blade coming in. Tempting to attack. Oh, good God. Why do these Deergar even exist? Two. He rolled a two against. He was going to go against Taslin. So the blade just goes wild. It's just, it's not, it's too chaotic there. He can't quite get a beat on it. And uh, Fetter, your command was just to keep going to Flotsam? Well, we, we went to full stop. I want him to get us moving again. Oh, and then, okay. So he takes that order into consideration and the vehicle, uh, the train starts moving. Not nearly as abrupt as it stopped, but it does start to shift and move and bring us to Sunny. Does she have enough? Can she participate in this fight? E- getting there. It's her turn. Bring us to Taslin. Gonna swing at this drover that's in front of me. Mm-hmm. That's next to the spider with another green flame blade. And that's not Soul Blade, right? That's the other guy? Oh, that guy is, yeah, Soul Blade. They're, they're, right now they're both Soul Blades. The uh, rider one fell off. Oh, okay. Because you killed him good. And then there was another rider on the spider that you also killed it. Nat 20. So that puts me at a 28. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> nice. That's going to be 15 slashing damage. And then the first guy that I hit is going to take... Um, 10 fire damage. Okay, so it... Oh, t- uh, 10 fire damage as well on the same guy? Or it leaps? Yeah. So, yeah. Same no, guy. it's 10. Same guy. And then the one that the it's gonna, again, the ember leaps to the spider. And he's gonna take... Okay, so here's a question for you, John. Since I critted, do you want me to also double the fire damage or no? Since I crit... Well, it's double the dice, right? Because that's. I mean, yeah. I mean, I d- yeah. I okay. double up the radiant damage when I crit, so yeah. Okay. Go for so it. So then he's the spider that it leaps to is gonna take fifteen fire damage. Oh, got a huge chunk out of him. I was like rolling fives across the board. It was like five, 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 five. Nice. You managed to get the uh, the one Duragar there who just completely eats it. He did. The spider is in a state of bloody, looking in pretty rough shape. Hitting like that is going to do wonders. I don't know if I'll get another 20. I've already had two crits tonight, so. I'd l- I'm ready for one. I'd love one. Right? Jesus. Well, here's a chance. Here's your chance, Feather. It's your turn next. You are in the shit. All right. So I'm um, just kind of like looking all around. Not a bunch of good options. There's some like blood running down Feather's nose. He's kind of wobbly a little bit. Uh, but the first thing he's going to do is just huck a classic dagger. Um, at the last Drogar on the other side of Taslin that's standing. Okay. Um, cool. That'll do it. Um, 21 plus a million. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a 28 to hit. Oh, yeah. Should be giving Yusuf these rolls. Jesus, that was the shittiest sneak attack roll. Oh, no. He's like twos and ones. It's fucking nothing. A six, uh, 12 points. Of damage, and I will see what is uh, what happens with him. All right. Well, you know, the same thing that happens to all creatures when their life force is ended. Fantastic. 
then I'm going to, with my offhand, uh, reach out and stab the, uh, reach out and stab the, uh, spider on the side of me. Okay. And that is going to be with the dragon tooth. Um, mm, 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 12, dirty 20 to hit. That does hit. Awesome. And good old dragon tooth. Hey, that's better. Um, so that is a nah, eight points of slashing damage and six points of poison. <laughs> All right, Fenner, uh, I want you to paint me a picture here. You've got the one Duergar that you knifed mm-hmm. to death, and then you've got another creature that you've, like, you, you've just done a multi-kill. Left hand, so essentially, like, my arms cross, I reach under my right armpit, um, and essentially the the dragon tooth is like um is held like reversed along my forearm and it's like one motion where i throw with the left hand and stab with the right and it's just like one motion just whack and they both kind of drop like the the dargar gets it right in the throat and they just like both peel off the side as like the train is slowly starting to move again and Feder goes ah all right, fuck me. Yusuf, how you doing down there, buddy? That dead. That one dead. That one dead. It's Yusuf's turn, so. Great. Wait, hold it's on. It's going. I, I didn't move, right? Yeah, you have you still have movement, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to fuck it. I mean, I'm, this guy could kill me in one swipe. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hop, uh, like, just dance around Taslin and get to the edge, the front edge of the car, kind of looking down over um, the engine. And, and that's where I'll get my head kind of pops over the top and I go, Yusuf? You see him standing there like facing off with him and he's he's uh, pretty fucked up as well. He's like, doing great. It, uh, we're fine here. How are you? I spit blood at the Dorgar <laughs> as if that that's my answer. Is <laughs> So then after that, yeah, Yusuf, it is your turn. So... God damn it. If I would have rolled the other D4 with this one, that would have been great. Um, one hits, one doesn't. Smiting. Okay. To re-roll these two, because I'm weapon master. 30 points of damage. Sorry, 32 points of damage. So he burns another second level spell slot. All right. So explain to me, in your own special Yusuf way, how you end this motherfucker. Woo-hoo. Um... <clears throat> So he hit me with the last uh, hit as well. So since I have the ability to flare this, I'm going to say I only had to hit him once. And I didn't miss at all with the second one. So um, he hits me with the last one and he's going to run up and come up underneath his next swing and cut up into his like into his chest from the inside the swing. And uh, the sword just goes halfway into his body and then up <laughs> and as he's like standing there dying he's gonna take the hammer from his hand and pull his sword out at the same time and let him fall off the train as it starts moving there ends the Duragar attempted piracy of this train does the hammer move down to a smaller size or does it stay like a mall size it goes back to its normal mall size as he's as the life leaves him, so the you know the minute that the Duragar dies, because that moment. Yeah. Actually, no. It's when he lets go. When you take it off, that thing shrinks and he's down, because he's no longer holding it. It's not a part of him anymore. Got it. So it's just a regular mall. Yep, it's a regular mall. And you can deduce based off of how that happened is that anything that was psychic about it was a part of his. There was an innate ability in him to be able to achieve a much more, a bigger oomph in his attacks. Oh, gotcha. So what's not a magical hammer? No, no, it's not. Oh, crap. Oh, well. Um, he'll uh, he'll kind of walk back in and set the hammer down and lean it in the corner. And, How are we doing? Uh, <laughs> and Fetter's going to kind of crawl back and try to just kind of like pour himself down the... Uh, down the vent. I think we could all use a drink. Mm. Yeah, uh, following after, Sunny runs over to Yusuf and she sees, A, she sees how bloody you are and you see that she's also in fairly rough shape as well, but she says something to you as she gets close to you, like, it's like almost like an incantation and uh, you can heal yourself for 14. Oh, great. Aw, cute. She gives you 14. She uh, takes a fourth level, a fourth level spell. 
uh, puts a fourth level spin on it and heals you for 14. Heals me for f- heals me for 14? Okay. It's like, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks. How are you? I got sucker punched by a couple of bastards. All right. Uh, everybody, sit down. Mm. <laughs> Fetter says <laughs> laying on a box, just... Uh, uh, you just flask out. Just ouch. <laughs> Nice stab in there, Blue. Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck, the knife is still in me. Oh, God. And she pulls it out. Nope. It hurt. I, like, pop the cork of the wine bottle that Fetter found and, and take a giant chug of it and then hand it to Fetter. I'll do the same and then hand it off to Sunny. Pass to the left. She takes a swig. Oh, there, there hits the spot. All right. Oh, there you go. Take it. Okay, so he uh, he hits Sunny for 12 from a bead, and then he hits Fetter for seven from a bead, and then he's going to, uh, how are you, how's everybody, how's everybody doing? I could use some rest, but otherwise. Are you, are you hurt? Nothing rest won't fix. <laughs> Three fists? I don't know. There's a lot of blood up there. I feel like there's a rib that's probably, uh, like, yeah. How, how bad does Taz look? Um... I sorry, I was checking in to remember like what my my medicine was. Um <laughs> shit like she said, um, or like I said, nothing rest won't fix. So do we want to just do a short rest? Will that get people back up where they need to be? Yeah. That'll help. Sure. I mean, what are we doing? Butt resting. Um It's true. Okay. Short rest. Flotsam, um, damage report, please. Calculating. And it, you hear a little bit more of a whirring as it tries to gauge the feel of the train. Moderate damage to engine. Speed unchanged. Structural integrity still within acceptable parameters. All right, uh, steady as she goes then, okay? Acceptable. And it continues doing its work, getting the, keeping the train going. And yeah, you guys staved off a, a bit of a, an attack. Well, how's everybody doing after their short rest? Fine. I'm good. I'm 47 out of 56. I'm hanging in there. 47 out of 56? Yeah. I, I, I saved some. I figure we're probably going to sleep at some point. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, he uh, he heals you for nine, so that'll fill you up. Okay. Buttercup. Kiggity. <laughs> Yusuf fills your cup. <laughs> Taz, how are you after the short rest? Fine. You full up? Yes. Okay. How's uh, Sunny? She's got about 45 out of 52, so she's doing better. I got a 52. Okay, I'll I'll go ahead and top her off as well, so that's another seven. Well, don't burn through all your stuff. Well, we, I don't know. Like, we don't know what we're going to be facing when we get there. Or if there's anything, if there's more of those things, we'll probably need it. Yeah, seems like we're still very much uh, the first of the cultists to arrive, but uh, we've thought what was perhaps a momentary uh, association with these Draugr is becoming something more serious. So So he heals her the rest of the seven, and he heals himself the other three that he needs, so he's back up to full as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. She sighs, like she sighs, but the, the sigh of someone who took a lot of damage just a bit ago and has healed it. <sighs> Man, and yeah, there is a, the briefest amount of time to be able to, yeah, continue your rest. Do one more little thing. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just nice long smoke with his feet up, trying to relax. <laughs> it's kind of like the uh, fantasy version of the end of Avengers, right? Where they're sitting at a place, they're they're sitting there eating <laughs> shawarma, finishing that bottle. Yeah, we're passing the bottle. So yeah, the Titan, huh? What uh, what else do you know about uh, about it other than putting the seed in its hand? Any dumb god riddles or old poems? You know how this all works out. A limerick. I haven't heard much except for the fact that this place doesn't do well with people that try and take it. Sure. I think that. I mean, fucking Vecna. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you What do you think the end result's going to be? Over or under, roughly. I think it's I think it's going to grow a tree in the hand, and I think it's going to possibly root it so that it can never rise. I'm not entirely sure, but 
but... She said she was wanted to grow a tree. Just call me inherently suspicious, but it's not going to, like, you know, come to life and destroy everything or accidentally turn on the Modron siphon, since that seems to be what the cult wanted. I'm just, just spitballing. I don't think so. She's... She seems to be very injured by what's been happening to the world here. I think she wants to try and nip this one in the bud. Sure. Sounds right. The small area that I was able to cleanse in the the swamp seemed to help her greatly. Um, yeah, I, I've done stuff like that at, back home. Growing trees, growing plants, flowers, crops, things like that. And those have given great peace, made her quite happy. That would be my guess. Right on then, but I don't know. There's always a... There's always another side, right? There's always a price to be paid. I don't know. Yeah. This is a big favor you guys are doing her, so hopefully uh, she repays in kind. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, she took one of the plates to her plane, so they won't be getting it back. Yeah, well, helpful. That's right. I mean, at the very least, by the time they figure out... Where it is. ...what they've done yeah. and where it is... I mean, they'll either have to make another one, or either way, that'll take. It's it's bought us a good amount of time. Right on. Just needed, you know. I just needed a good reminder of what the stakes are. Flotsam, how are we doing? We are soon to arrive to our destination, and you feel the mechanist train start to slow. This time, correctly, not more cautiously, just a natural slow to achieve its destination without overshooting. And the train cars in response wobble and strain a bit and eventually the vehicle comes to a complete stop and emerging you find yourself on a platform connected to a modest stone bridge which precedes a stronghold straight ahead the stone bridge leads to a large metal doors on top of which is carved a multi-horned face Uh, time has had no effect on this doorway to this stronghold and it looks ready to keep out hordes not that there's all that much room on this bridge you find yourself at. Your eyes wander across the outer walls of this stronghold, and you marvel at the idea to design like, like it were above ground. Like there's towers on two ends. It looks like you just took a big old stronghold to keep from above ground and brought it down. Strange. There's a kind of parapet up top that looks like it traverses the perimeter that someone could walk around, and you see two sentry towers immediately on either side of the door, above it with mass- massive ballista aimed in your direction your heart skips of course it of course skips a beat at the prospect of getting arrowed off this bridge after coming so far but there's no movement up top it's quiet in fact you hear nothing welcome to Fallhold, a stronghold that would make a perfect home for adventurers looking to stake their claim in the events of this world granted it's a bit of a fixer upper and no one has managed <laughs> to maintain permanent residents here in the usurper's fall (laughs) but there is a chasm between a long ass time and permanence if you maintain it it is yours a super secret underground layer with a private transit line i would be lying if i said i wasn't insanely jealous of our heroes in fact after the tiefling told me about this place i may or may not have considered just moving there with my dozens of bullywug brothers, sisters, wives, nephews, nieces, uh, let's see, who else? Um, my uncle, uh, oh no, he's not invited. Um, oh wait, where was I? Yeah, see, I almost gave up my successful storytelling career for this stupid place, but I didn't, so you're welcome. Anyway, let's meet up again soon, and I'll tell you about all the shit they find down here during these Demon Days. Bless you. God damn. That was Bless you. amazing. So many droplets. <laughs> I put my arm up and now my arm's just wet. 
Oh no. Interesting. He's a bit of a fixer upper. Interesting. Uh, this is John, where Bernie John is was trying to get into. Yeah. Was this place? Um, does this place look at all like the underground fortress from the outside, at least that we walked out of? In uh, oh, back in the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, from the outside, not quite. Okay. The in the be that in the very beginning, that one looked more dungeon esque and a lot more built into the mountain and a part of it. This seems like a bit of an odd choice to build a, a, a fortress inside the mountain and keep some of those outside trappings. Gotcha. So, okay. Got the map all, all ready for you guys. Oh, boy. Uh, and, yeah, as part of the things I've been, I've been sitting on for months, <laughs> you will have a an HQ, depending on how you use it. Hmm. <laughs> In the middle of nowhere, under a mountain. Yep. The under a giant mountain. Although and, this could be under the Titan. Sure. Oh man, maybe it's like that. That it's in the Titan's butt or something. It's like a Winne It's like a Winnebago. You know, it's like a Winnebago. Yeah, yeah. When they defeated the Titan, uh, they basically ostriched him, and his head is in like downward, yeah. and his bum is sticking up, and you guys are just gonna live there in the Titan bum. I <laughs> just a minute. Here's I want to Winnebago. Here's what Fetter's probably. Of course, we'd be in the. Yeah, he's probably thinking as like I could flip this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, it is a fixer upper, but look, I, we could do Aslan's this. Aslan's probably going if we a couple of months there. Yeah. Oh put God. some color. I could here. totally flip this. Sunny can grow plants over on this side. Here, let me walk you to the Vecna master bedroom. I could, <laughs> I could flip this. <laughs> There's an arch devil that would love this. <laughs> like he's definitely just like, yeah, <laughs> totally. Like this, I, he could contract the shit out of this. Yeah. 